Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to talk about factory constructors. The best way I can describe a factory constructor is it's kind of like a triage system. So you know when you call a business and they say, how may I direct your call? And you may have a question of say, do you sell tires or something? And they'll say, well, we'll send you to the car or automotive section. That person who answers the call cannot actually tell you the answer because they don't know but they will at least direct your call to somewhere else to get you that information okay so then the automotive section will call you and say oh sure we do sell tires okay so what if for example you have a factory constructor and you want to let's just say I this is my class pet right let's just say I am a dog person right not a cat person not a some other type of pet person right I'm a dog person so um, what we'll say string person equals dog and I could say if person equals, by the way, ignore this stuff down here, okay? Um, equals dog. Um, oh, wait a minute. I got to put something like pet um, um, fluffy, okay? If string equals dog, fluffy equals new pet dot dog okay else or else if person equals cat so if you're a cat person fluffy equals new pet dot cat right so you can do it this way but remember if you have a class Okay, first of all, let's back up here. I'm a dog person. I'm not sure if this person right here, if this is me or not, I'm not sure if person is necessarily going to equal dog because the, the um, user might input cat or some other type of animal. If they put dog, you don't want to get class pet. You want to get class pet.dog, right? So you want to instantiate fluffy as pet.dog. But... Because you don't know that ahead of time, how would you get instantiate pet.dog? See? So you can't just say, you can always instantiate pet.dog, pet.cat, pet.everything else, right? But this is, um, th this is a way to simplify what you're dealing with. So have less, um, in the end, have less variables. So if the person is a dog person, then you will, Fluffy will be the object of instantiated pet.dog. If the person's a cat person, then it will be pet.cat. You see that? So you don't have to say fluffy1, fluffy2 for pet.dog and pet.cat. So I hope that's clear. But the problem with it, this is in main. So if we're going to have a class like this, we might as well encapsulate the code so we don't have it in the main code, we have it in the class by itself because that's just a useful feature of the class. You could still instantiate pet.dog if you want to, but at least you have the option of having, being able to instantiate something else here. That's where factory is. So factory is basically the triage. This is the interface and you will say, hey, if you have this, if this is a dog person, we'll return pet.dog. Okay, so let's delete this part right here. And instead look here. So here's my class pet. Keyword is factory, pet, and then we have string person. Here is, a, here is an, a parameter, right? Now, this parameter, notice, this is not the same thing as, um, uh, you can't use a this dot, even if it was eyes, a this dot person, because you don't want this parameter, because it's not the same, you're not using the um, instance variables at all. Unlike a, um, a generative constructor, or even named constructors, this is a little different because this is just the triage. Remember, you don't actually use the rest of the um, members in the class. It just tells you where to go. So in this particular situation, string person, okay, if person equals a dog person, return pet.dog. So if it is a cat person, return pet.cat. If you're anything else, so else, Everybody else, if you're not a dog, cat, dog person or cat person, you're a other person, okay? And how do you instantiate it? Pet, 
fluffy equals new pet and then we have to put in our argument right so I'll just gonna say I'm a dog person for now right and so I'll say print um, fluffy dot pet dot dog eyes so I should equal two and when we run it it equals two okay because fluffy is the instantiated object of pet dot dog and not of just pet not of pet dot cat because I made it so in other words it simplifies the code okay so it's the same concept as the um, uh, generative constructor where you can introduce functionality in the class itself and not below that okay so what if I put in cat here the cat has four eyes maybe his glasses or something I don't know um, so okay so pet has four eyes other than that you have eyeless pets okay so that's the purpose of a factory constructor um, now when you think about it what if things change a little bit itself okay so I want to go ahead and be able to let's say wait a minute I want to be able to put variables inside of here okay so I wanted to say um, this dot eyes let's do that so I want to be able to put some arguments some parameters inside here whoops got to type it correctly this dot eyes okay but wait a minute if you're going to return pet dot dog there there has to be a parameter here right because if you're if you're gonna have a parameter here you have to have an argument excuse me an argument because you're returning that um, what else are we going to actually do well there's several ways of doing this you can always say um, no we're not gonna put eyes right here we're just gonna put it right down here okay so in other words um, legs equals four also so you can always put the variables down here when you instantiate it or you could put it up here at runtime so this is going to be set ahead of time right it's during compile time I guess um, it, it's when you just it's set in stone but if you want to be able to introduce it right inside here how else can you do it well you run the program it the pet dot fluffy you know fluffy excuse me pet fluffy calls the factory constructor eyes and legs are still null right because we don't have anything inside here several ways of doing this but one way is maybe putting it right here actually um uh, number eyes and then you could put here actually let's put legs so you could put here int number legs And it would be this dot legs okay so what am I doing so if I put two parameters right inside of here right one this first one will just be part of asking what type of person is this the second integer is actually going to be introduced as an argument it becomes the parameter this dot legs so it has the value of legs so if I do it right here um, legs I have to introduce it right here so how many legs do you want a cat to have let's make it super cat like eight legs right it should return eight okay so that's that's how you actually do it so notice number dot legs is not a class member it's just a parameter um, int number of legs is just a parameter it is not a class member at all okay actually this is the argument um, when it comes down to here pet dot dog this is actually because it's a named constructor or named constructor or gen generated constructors you can use class members as the 
um, parameters themselves. Okay, so that's one other thing. Finally, what if someday you say, wait a minute, um, I got a bird, okay, so I don't want to be associated with these other pet owners. So I'm not a dog person, I'm not a cat person. I'm certainly not a hamster person because those guys are freaks, right? So let's just say I'm a, I'm a bird person, okay? So let's make a new class bird. Now when you think about it, you can't just return any type of object. So if I just put here class bird, right, and that's it, and no extends, just class bird, or if I put inside here like class lizard, I just do that, right? Can I return new lizard? And the answer is no. Why not? You can only return the type in your class. Okay, so you can't return a number, an integer. You can't return a string. You can't return any of those. You can only return an object of the same type, and the type is pet. So pet.dog, pet.cat, pet, pet.other are in the same type because they're in the same class. So if you extend the class, is bird in the class of pet? Yes. So it's in the type of pet. So pet type pet fluffy. Fluffy is the variable. Pet is the type. You can ex instantiate bird. Okay. So, <clears throat> but here, so we say, let's say right here, bird. So extends it, we make a generative constructor right inside here. And then we call, we, um, this is the initializer, right? Super dot other. Okay, so what if I just said super? I'm going to get an error inside of here it, itself, right? Because I want to basically, basically introduce it right inside of here. Factory dot pet. When, when you're asking... This, it to take on the characteristics of the super class, okay? Super is going to call, is going to get the properties of not just for bird, but for pet, right? But this is not a, const, a this is not a generative constructor. It is a factory constructor, so you really can't do that. You can't extend a factory constructor because, again, you cannot use a factory constructor to make an object in and of itself. It triages you. So it sends you to other places, but it in and of itself does not create an object. So you have to have some other, either a named constructor, or if this wasn't a factory constructor, you can't have a generative constructor and a factory constructor in the same class. You cannot. Okay? So this one I just decided to say super dot other. So in other words, it will extend pet dot other itself. And I'll say here eyes would equal six. So how would I change this? Instead of else return other, what I would say else if um, actually else if person equals bird, then I would say um, return new bird number legs and so I have to come down here bird oh oh so um um int number legs super dot other number legs okay so we're getting a lot of warnings here this pet class pet does not have a constructor dog pet dot dog um i'm probably missing dead code um else oh oh, oh wait a minute um wait a minute this should be the other way and then I'm going to say else and I think I have an extra no that's correct that's correct okay so I'm getting no errors inside here so now I am a bird but birds have two legs 
so fluffy is two legs. Fluffy is not so fluffy anymore, um, although feathers can be fluffy. And how about eyes? How many birds do the uh, does bird have? Six eyes. So there we go. So again, what's going on inside here? If person equals bird, up inside of here, person equals bird, it triages it, goes down to class bird, not pet.bird because it's in a different section altogether, bird, and it introduces int number of legs because return new bird number of legs. Right here it was two, right? Two, two, two. Introduces it right here. It calls the super class pet.other number of legs. So this is two. It gets sent to two. And then pet.fluffy.legs equals two. Okay? So I hope that seems to be clear. I went over this a number of times, and I think this is going to be the best explanation I have. One other thing, factory constructors can also be used for other purposes. They're a little bit more complicated. They're, um, the other situation where factory constructors can be used is for something called singletons. A singleton, so I'm just going to talk about this. I'm not really going to go over it because it is rather complicated. I don't fully understand it, actually. Um, let's just say, for example, you have a blueprint, so a class for a car. And you have, you have everything the same, the same color, number of wheels, the same manufacturer, made by the same people, same location. Everything is the same. If you make, if you instantiate class car once, and then you instantiate class car with a different variable, they're two different objects altogether. Okay, so it's kind of like you get the same exact car model, everything. There's two separate things, right? You crash one car, the other car isn't crashed. Even though they're identical, you can change it. You can paint one, the other won't be painted because they're different objects altogether. What a singleton actually is, is that if you instantiate a factory class itself with a singleton, okay, not in this circumstance, when you utilize it as a singleton, you can only instantiate the same object at any time. The best, again, analogy I would say is if you create the car, if you decide to create the car again, instantiate again, it will, what is going to happen is it's going to reappear somewhere else. So in other words, if you have var, var car one equals new car, okay? And then var car, var car two equals new car. And both of these cars were um, with using factory constructors, car one and car two would be the exact same object. You're simply pointing all to that one instantiated object. So why is this important and why would you do something like that? It, it depends on what you're looking for. So the, the classical example is it's used for something like a cache. So if you want to look for a memory like one piece of information and you want to track it, the state of the memory or the state of the something. You're, you're logging something. You're, you're keeping track of something. But you don't want to basically, for, for you to have multiple objects of it, you would use a singleton. Okay? I can't go into too much more details. This is a rather advanced program, way beyond me. But I just wanted to introduce it just so that you're familiar. There's it, When people talk, when you read more, and people talk about factory constructors, this is probably the main way I'm going to use it, but there are other uses for it as well, and that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I hope factory constructors were not easy to understand, but at least reasonable. But of course, if you have any questions, always feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. Thank you.